here. You, ha you have a lovely office. Thank you very much. Yes. You, you have a very, very lovely office with a lovely view yeah, from your office. Yeah, it's a very office, pretty workplace. Desk. It's a lovely work. I do feel a little bit like I've dressed for Wall Street. There's something very proper about you that made me think, I think I have to get my suit on for Well, you. I only wore a suit because you were going to hear. I usually oh, wear just a jumpsuit. Right? Oh. <laughs> As I said uh, earlier in the, in the, the deep thoughts over yeah. there in the, in the big questions, yeah. you're, a, you're a commander of the British Empire? I'm a commander of the British Empire, yes. Now, what does one need to do to become a commander of the British Empire? Um, in my case, a bit of acting. Okay. <laughs> Um, and what do you get? What do you get? Do you get to command a regiment or something? Can you, you get a, a, a beautiful medal, um, the Medal of Honor, that is the CBE, uh, the cross, and uh, you are able to do certain things, I believe, in St. Paul's Cathedral. You legitimate can... Christian things, not parties or... You know. <laughs> I think I could do legitimate Christian things in St. Paul's <laughs> Cathedral. Like, what do you get what to do? Do you get to, like, uh, um... I think there's, baptize there's people a, or anything? Well, no, the crypt chapel, you can use the crypt. Yes, you could baptize your child there, I think. That's okay. I think you could You'd have to have a priest. You, you couldn't do it yourself. Yeah, no, I couldn't do it myself. Okay. I have All right. married people before, but I don't, yeah. That now, was... as a commander of the British Empire, yes. are you going to go to the royal wedding this weekend? I'm not, no. Oh, why? No. Why? Why not? Because I'm here in New York doing a little thing called Letters Live oh. at the town hall. Oh, that's nice. Nine o'clock tomorrow night, Friday night is now. Oh. But, you know, now and tomorrow yes, night. And tomorrow night. Right. Right. Nicely done. Yeah. Nicely done. Well, I, uh, we know you from so many great performances. War Horse, Tinker Tailor, Soldier Spy, Star Trek, Sherlock, 12 Years a Slave, Doctor Strange, Imitation Game, uh, obviously Infinity War. Yes, um, that little flick. Uh, what do you say? That little flick. That, exactly, that, that indie. Sketch, sketch of an that idea. That indie. <laughs> um, and of course, uh, I, I don't know, of course, you didn't know this. I loved you in Doctor Strange. I'm thank a big you. Doctor Strange well, fan. You're a perfect you. Stephen Strange. Thank you. Um, uh, that's full of mystical experiences, and I found out that you actually had your own Tibetan experience. What, what was that? That was extraordinary. Well, basically, uh, I had a year between uh, school and university, and I worked for half of it to pay to go off to India for six months, five of which I was teaching in a Tibetan Buddhist monastery in the foothills of Darjeeling in, in northwest, no, sorry, northeast India in so West Bengal. five months living with uh, yeah, Tibetan Buddhist with monks. Them, living in the basement as their, their, their teacher on site. And I say teaching in the loosest possible terms. I'm very, uh, I don't know, I just, I'm full of incredible kind of respect for real teachers. I, I, I got away with murder. I think it was more a cultural exchange um, than anything uh, well, you, actually learned learn? through me teaching them English. I learned a lot more, I think, than I did. That's where the exchange was a bit unfair, but we had a great time. And I what do learned... they do for fun? What, like, you're 19. Oh, well, what, I mean, are you, what are you doing for fun with Tibetan monks? They have a really good sense of humour. So, I mean, uh, one night I was, I was sort of passing through uh, near their living quarters, having had supper with them all, and there was this sort of really charged atmosphere coming from a row. I was like, what the hell are they watching? And I went in, and they were watching Braveheart. And they were like... <laughs> They're you know, like on Tibetan sir, sir. television or no? Like they're, they're on a DVD, DVD and okay. yeah, and they're going sir, sir, sir. The, the, the English are like the, the English are the Chinese, and we are the Scots. <laughs> so I was like, okay, well, uh, and and the, the barbaric, murderous violence that you're watching, it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> so, and there was another moment where I remember uh, they came rushing to me. And they said, sir, quick, 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 you must come, you must come, quick, bring camera, bring camera. And I went, okay. Some of them were speaking less broken English by the end, but they, a lot sure. of them did speak in sure. very broken English, despite my best efforts. But they um, dragged me to this balcony, and there were these two dogs who, in the heat of the day, got pretty heated with each other and had done that. Can't do that. That doesn't help on CBS. Does that not happen? Oh, we've got to redo it. Uh, no, you don't have to redo it. It'll just be blurred. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> I can tell you the exact moment it'll be blurred. What happened to my... It, what, I, what, I will tell you the moment there, it'll be blurred. There. It's gone. <laughs> gone. Weird. My fingers just went out of focus. That was really weird. Yeah. Is that Doctor Strange? Oh, is that okay? Is That's okay? fine. Yeah. It's fine. Yes? Um, fair enough, CBS. Fair enough. But this is nature, and it happens out there. Sure. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> it doesn't happen in here. No. Uh, <laughs> this is a dog... Free zone, but yeah, it was so that the was dogs going, are going at it. Yeah, but they also the, the point is they were stuck. Oh, they, that'll happen. They 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 happen. they'd finished, but one wanted to go that way and one wanted to go that way. But they were stuck, uh -huh. and I was sort of slightly horrified by this, going, "What's happening to these animals?" And and yeah, they they were going, "Sir, ah, sir, look, look, Kodak moment, Kodak moment." <laughs> uh, and then they took a photograph. They thought it was hysterical. Yeah, sure. 
Simple pleasures. <laughs> simple pleasures. Yeah. Simple pleasures. So that's what I got up to. Did in you the foothills did you do any months. like sort of like did you do any sort of painful prostrations or deep meditation? No, or they don't like do that? painful prostrations. I mean, they have a very sort of rigorous routine. They work up. They work in, very early in the morning. They, they're up with the crack of dawn and they perform puja, which is their prayer ritual, and that goes on a while. And then they have breakfast, and then there's more study, and then I fit in with an English lesson somewhere in the mix in the morning, and then I go to the school, which was full of refugee children from Tibet, and I wow. teach them, and I come back, and we'd have lunch, and then they'd have an afternoon of play and exercise and fun, and then in the evening we'd all get together for another meal. And then have you been back? I haven't been back there, no, I haven't, but I, I mean, it's something that's really stayed with me, and in all honesty, it's, it's, it had a profound influence on me, and I, I learnt by watching them, but was very confused. The rituals are very intricate and detailed and ancient, so I went to learn what they were doing in town through a, a very, you know, proper, very good English-speaking lama, and he then introduced me to a friend, and I went off on a, a week's-long retreat with some of the other teachers in the similar placements at other monasteries and schools in the area, and that was... Extraordinary, that's, and that's something I'll carry with me for the rest of my life. I learned to meditate. And is, is Tibetan a distinctive language? Very cool. Is it zone language? Is Tibetan a language? Tibetan, yes. Do you know anything in Tibetan? Tashi Dili. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> what did you just say? <laughs> you don't want to know. It's CBS. You right there. Yeah, yeah, right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The new show, Patrick Melrose, on Showtime. Yeah. Um, uh, he is a, as we saw there, he was someone who is, is, uh, uh, is addicted to drugs. Uh, this is the second character that I know of that you play addicted to drugs. Sherlock is addicted to drugs as yes. well. Yes. Why, what, what draws you to sort of uh, these characters with addictive, addictive and extreme personalities? I don't know. No. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I like... There's a lot of reasons why I like acting, but one of them is to sort of do things that are outside of my comfort zone or, or my my life experience and, and that's certainly one I'm, I'm thankful to say so it's it's also a profound journey of salvation this in this case this character has uh, suffers massive trauma in his childhood um, at the hands of his father and he then in his 20s we, we visit him first actually in the order of the series is slightly reversed from the book order the second book is the first episode. it's based on a series of books that you've loved for a series years. of books by Edward St Auburn the author who uh, whose own life very much mirrors um, Patrick's it's a it's a it's an alter ego and uh, he is both an extraordinary human being for having survived that and writing about it in some of the most deaf, beautiful, heartbreaking prose, funny as hell, despite the gravity of some of the um, situations in the story. Um, uh, prose that you'll read, I think, in the 21st century. I mean, it's that good. And I fell in love with the books. I heard that friends of uh, mine, no, well, now friends of mine, but people I didn't know, Rachel Horowitz and uh, Michael Jackson had the IP, and we met and we talked about it, and I just fell in love with the project. And, got on and helped them develop it, and here we are. And it's an incredible story of him from an addict as we first see him in the 20s in New York, in his 20s in New York, back to his childhood and the root cause of the drama and trauma, um, into the episode you saw a clip from where he's sober but purposeless, and then gradually coming into the world as a husband and a, and a father in his own right, and doing right, and, and escaping the gravity of his parents and becoming literally an orphan, but also psychologically an orphan. Well, you say that this is not, this is thankfully not your experience, that you're outside yeah. of your comfort yeah. zone. But uh, I understand you've, you actually had a quite shocking, this is coffee and this is, this is, tequila. is water. Right, yes, exactly, okay. exactly. <laughs> is that you had sort of a it's shocking coffee. I'm doing the Donald Trump way of drinking. <laughs> I think Martin Freeman, I think actually Donald Trump learned this from Martin Freeman. Martin often drinks his cup of tea like this. Really? Mm. Really? Yes. He doesn't seem feeble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should try him at thumb war. He's pathetic. No, no, he's not. He's not. Um, are, you, are you good at thumb, thumb wrestling? Thumb war? No, I'm terrible, but we can have a go if you want. Oh, let's try it. Should we do it? Okay. Sure, why not? <laughs> this isn't just thumb war. This is infinity thumb war. <laughs> we haven't rehearsed this, so coffee no, may correct. fly. Okay, what is so it? How one, do you two, do three, it? four, I declare thumb war, and then we go One, two, it. three, four, I declare thumb and then we go for it. Let me see yeah. these thumbs before we start here. Tail the no, tape. No, not one, two, three, I'm a cheat, hee hee, but like... Okay, right? You have to count to four. Okay, so I'm, my thumb's shaking. I'm so nervous. You've got a strong... Ready? Yeah, okay. One, one two, two, three, four, four. I, I declare, declare a thumb war. Colbert. Oh, man. Colbert. No, what's going on? Oh! He wins. Yeah, I guess, um... More? I guess... I think I've, I think I've, okay, I think I've got to give you my CBE now. I think that's how it works. 
Patrick Melrose airs Saturday on Showtime. Benedict Cumberbatch, everybody.